Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna talk about behavior trees. Behavior trees are used to create complex AI by using small independent tasks. Every behavior tree has a root node that's the entry point of your tree. There are leaf nodes that's where our custom logic lives. Here you implement your actions and conditions. The composites are the brains of your tree. Composite nodes are also known as control flow nodes because this is what they do. The two most common implementations are sequences and selectors. A sequence expects all its children to succeed, so it executes them in order and in case one fails, it stops. The selector node does the opposite, it requires only one child to succeed. It also executes its children in order and stops as soon as one succeeds. The last type of node to talk about are decorators. They are not part of the mathematical definition, but they are a common pattern in software development. It helps to make the tree less complex and the nodes more reusable. Here are some examples of decorators. The inverter, also known as not, inverts the output of its child. The succeeder, or always succeed, returns success regardless of the child output. And the limiter works slightly different from the other ones. Instead of changing the output, it actually controls how many times this child can be called. Now that you have a high-level idea, let me show you a practical example. I created this project to show a behavior tree in action. One thing that I didn't mention is that every node in a behavior tree is going to return one of those states, success, failure, or running. The name may change slightly depending on the implementation, but the meaning is always the same. Nodes also have a common method. Here it's called tick, but you can find it as update or process in other implementations. This is the method called by the parent node. It all receives an actor, that's the element where this behavior tree is applied to, and a blackboard, that's where you store and share data. This is basically the interface of every node in a behavior tree. So in my example, I have two nodes that I call home, they are part of a group called home. What I want in this example is my NPC to follow my mouse. Currently it's not doing anything. I want my character to follow my mouse, and if the cursor is too far, it should go for one of the homes, the closest one. So I'm gonna show you how a behavior tree for this NPC would look like. So let's start creating the behavior tree. I'll first add the root node and a selector as the first node. Now I'm gonna add a sequencer for the first branch. I'll create an action node that moves the player to the mouse position. In this example, I will create simple implementations and then as new scenarios come, I will refactor them to become more reusable. After creating my node, I need to come to the inspector here, to the script field, and choose the option to extend script. This will create a new script, extending my action node. Now I need to implement the tick function. Here I get the mouse position and I make the actor move in its direction. If I run the example, you can see that my character is already following the mouse. One thing I need to change here is that when you have an action that takes more than one tick to complete, you need to return running as a state. I will do that by checking if the final distance is less than one pixel to the target. If it is, I consider the task as completed, otherwise it's still running. Now that my actor is following the mouse, I want to implement the condition to stop if the mouse is too far. For this, I will create a condition node. It's virtually the same as an action node, but the icon is different in my tree. My condition will check if the actor position is less than, let's say, 300 pixels from my mouse position. When I run the scene, you can see now that my NPC only follows the mouse when it's close enough. For the sake of reusability, you shouldn't have values hard-coded in your node. So I'll create a parameter called detection radius, so when reusing this script, I can't find a different value for that. Godot will expose this parameter as a field in the editor, what's quite handy. Let me set 600 pixels here. Now you can see that my NPC is following the mouse from farther. So let me now implement a second branch which goes to the closest home. For that, I will add another sequence. Again, I will start with a simpler implementation and then refactor it. I'll create a new action 
that would go to home position. First, I get all the nodes in the group home and then I select the closest one. If you can't find any home, it will fail, otherwise it will move the actor in that direction. Let's see it working. As you can see, it tries to follow the mouse as before, but when it's too far, it goes straight to the closest box. So there are a few things to improve in this logic. First of all, this node is doing too much, so we are going to break it in smaller tasks. I'll move the find closest home to another action and save it to the blackboard. The go to home position now just picks the position from the blackboard and moves the actor in its direction. You can see it still works. Now you may have noticed that go to home position and go to mouse position are quite similar. So let's make them more generic so we can reuse the same script in both places. One good practice is to never hard code blackboard keys inside your tasks. This makes them less reusable. So let's change it here. So I'll move the key name to the field in the editor and I'll also rename some variables here. Now that the script is generic enough, I'm going to rename it from go to home position to go to target position. Now I will also move the blackboard key from the find code home. And another improvement would be exposing the group name as a parameter. So now this action is not about finding the closest home anymore, but finding the closest node in a group. One thing you may have noticed is that you end with the name of the nodes and the name of the scripts being different. And that's totally fine, because I want my scripts to be as generic as possible, while my nodes should be descriptive enough so I know what my tree is doing. One thing I need to change to be able to use my new go to target position script in my go to mouse position node is to move the logic that finds the mouse position to another action. This logic is actually used in two different places, so I went killing two birds with one stone, removing some duplication here. It will get the mouse position and save to the blackboard. Now in the script that checks if the mouse position is nearby, I can get it from the blackboard. And as this script is generic enough, I'm going to rename it to is target nearby. Now my go to mouse position script can be replaced by the generic one. I just need to define what's the blackboard key for my position. As you can see, it still works. Now let me give you an example of the power of reusability in behavior trees. Let me add another action to my behavior tree. Let's say if the NPC reaches home, it changes its color. This will be a third branch in my main selector. However, the way the tree is working right now, this node will never be called. The reason for that is that the branch that moves to home position never fails, so it will always stop in the second branch. Even if the item I read reached home. To fix that, I need to add another condition to the second branch that checks if the item is read home. Luckily, I can reuse the script is target nearby. I just need to set the detection radius to 1, which means both items are technically in the same position. However, this script succeeds when the item is nearby, and what I want here is the opposite of that. I want this branch to fail if the item is nearby. For that, I can use an inverter decorator. Now my NPC is following the mouse, and it tries to go home if the mouse is too far, and when it reaches home, it changes its color to red. And that's it. Besides implementing the new action to change the color, I didn't have to implement a single line of code extra to make this validation work. And that's a cool thing about behavior trees, once you have the basic nodes implemented, you can reuse them as you wish. Here's how our behavior tree looks like. In the first branch there is a sequence that first loads the mouse position, checks if the mouse is nearby, and then go to home position. In case this one fails, the selector tries the second branch, which find the closest home, and in case the item is not home already, it goes to the home position. If this branch also fails, then it tries the third branch that's just an action that changes the color. We could reorganize this tree in a different way. The first branch would remain the same. The second branch would then check the items at home and change its color if it's not. And in case this one fails, then it goes to the third branch which find the close home and go to home position. Either way, both trees would do the same thing. This is what I have for this video, I hope you enjoyed, see you next time.